Hey guys, Modsy here, back with another video, and today we're doing a bit of a collection update. I've had several items arrive over the last couple of months uh, that I'm planning to do videos on very soon, and uh, I thought I'd just sort of chuck them all together because they've been sitting here sort of waiting, and it might take a couple of months by the time I get around to showing you all of them for the videos, but uh, I thought I'd show them all off at once. Uh, so I guess the first thing that arrived is a brand new floppy drive. Uh, I've been looking one for one for my Windows 98 PC. Uh, I had a few people suggest that I make uh, that I use the little SD card and do like an SD card to floppy drive reader, but uh, I'm not really a big fan of those. While they are good in their own, you know, right, and they're much easier for transferring, you know, bits and pieces, um, I, I like to be a bit more authentic with my retro builds, so, uh, and it's getting really hard to find brand new floppy drives that are actually working, because these things were notoriously uh, bad reliability-wise, uh, and so trying to find one that's in good condition is just getting really, really hard, especially here in Australia. Uh, but I managed to find this one. This is brand new, and I believe the seller still has one or two left um, that are the same as this. Oh, sorry, that faceplate's out of focus. But yeah, it's got a nice silver faceplate, which is my favorite color. Uh, so um, yeah, this is in good condition. So of course, a floppy drive is kind of useless without the disks that go with it. So I bought a box of uh, floppy disks as well, just so I can start making boot uh, discs and bits and pieces for uh, Windows 98 and stuff like that as well. So yeah, some fluffy drives Not that exciting. Uh, so the next thing that arrived was my uh, as a brand new original uh, Western Digital Raptor drive 36 gig. So the original SATA 1 interface 150 uh, megabytes a second and uh, this drive was only $8 on eBay um, the seller here locally in Victoria I managed to pick this up for an absolute bargain. Uh, I've done like a hard drive test and that on it and done scan for bad sectors and everything like that and it is in perfect health. Uh, in fact, I've actually done a full 36 gig write to the drive uh, just to make sure, well, it's 34 point whatever it is. Uh, it's uh, done a full write to the drive to make sure it's completely usable and there's no issues at all and uh, it's in perfect condition, which is awesome. So yeah, the very next thing that I picked up is uh, this here, which you can probably see the writing on it is a AMD Athlon 64 3700 socket 939 single core uh, CPU. So back in the day I actually skipped from the Athlon XP 3200 plus straight to a uh, Athlon 64 X2 3800 plus uh, and actually skipped the single core version. I also skipped the uh, the other socket, the, the in-between socket that, uh, that the first Athlon 64 chips were on because it didn't have DDR, like dual channel DDR support and uh, it wasn't that much faster than the, the Pentium 4 CPUs at the time. So the more exciting uh, socket that was to come was the 939 socket, which is probably one of my favorite sockets of all time. So uh, yeah, I picked up this CPU to sort of give it a run and a test uh, to, to um, compare against my FX5500 and my uh, Opteron 180, uh, which if you're not familiar with the Opterons, that's uh, essentially an X2 4800 plus, it's, it's actually the exact same CPU, but it's just got uh, ECC support and some other bits and pieces as well. Uh, so yeah, that arrived. Uh, and of course, to cool the the, uh, the Athlon 64 CPUs a little bit nicer, I picked up a new CPU cooler for those, so I'm not just using a tiny little crappy aluminium one. Uh, I actually picked up a Thermaltake Silent Boost K8. Uh, and this is actually my second Silent Boost that I've ever owned. Uh, these are some of the nicest CPU coolers you can actually get for uh, for you know still brand new these days as well. A nice copper copper core and copper fins on it, uh, and it just has very simple support for 80 mil fans. So if you want to change the the Cat 7 fan that's actually on here, you can do that as well. Uh, but this thing's really really nice. You can kind of see a bit more of the details about what it looks like there. It's really really nice. And this is actually the second Silent Boost that I've actually bought as well as I mentioned. Uh, I actually have. This one here, which is for socket A for the Athlon XP CPUs. This is uh, probably my favorite Athlon uh, XP CPU cooler that you can buy. It is really, really, really nice. Um, you can pick them up brand new, still very, very cheap uh, if you have a look around as well. Um, probably one of the nicer CPU coolers that you can still get brand new uh, these days for, uh, for those sockets. Uh, so yeah, the next thing that arrived is actually a game, and this is the uh, Network Q Rally Rally Championship. Uh, this is my first ever rally game that I ever played as a child. Uh, before any console rally games at all, my grandfather used to play this over local network with the um, the guy that owned the, the petrol garage next door to where their house is in Tassie. 
Uh, they used to network, play this together, and every time I came to visit my grandparents, I'd always sit down on his old 486 and, and play this game uh, back in the 90s. This is an absolute, you know, incredibly awesome rally game. Uh, it is also the Australian release of the game. If I just roll over there, uh, as you can see, it's got the nice Euro Press and the import bits and pieces there. But uh, yeah, this is an incredible game. This just, I haven't played this game since um, probably the early, to, like 2001, I think was one of the last times I ever played this game, uh, and it was at my grandfather's. I've only ever played it actually at my grandparents' place, and um, I was doing trying to collect um, the old games that I used to play in box uh, to sort of have a nice collection of the uh, my original PC games, and um, this one I managed to pick up off a local eBay seller here in Australia. Absolute bargain, and I have to give a shout out to this guy. Uh, and his name just escapes me, so bear with me for 30 seconds. Uh, so Rod, he is, uh, I'll put a link to his eBay page uh, in the description, and I'll probably put it on screen here as well. Uh, he has an incredibly large collection of uh, video games for not just PC, but consoles as well, and he is probably one of the only people who puts a huge amount of effort and time into packaging these things. For instance, everything in this was in brand new condition except for the exterior of the box. You can see the box has been well used, um, but uh, in terms of the CD itself, the CD that this was in was in perfect condition, not a single fingerprint, mark, scratch or anything on it. And the entire thing, even the internals of this were completely bubble wrapped, including the manuals. Um, he bubble wrapped the manuals. That's how good a condition he did at wrapping these, these games up. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a video on this very soon. Uh, probably one of my all-time favourite rally games. But I'm going to be doing a kind of a unique video about uh, my influence of racing games where this game is going to get featured. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. That'll probably come in next month, I think I'm actually planning to do that. So in November, uh, probably first or second week of November actually. It's going to be a cool, fun little video uh, to talk about my history of uh, sim racing and uh, racing games. So yeah. Alright, so the next thing to arrive is one of the video cards that arrived, and this is an incredibly awesome card. Uh, this is the 3D Profit 9000 PCI uh, by Hercules. So this is an ATI Radian 9000 uh, PCI version, and it has a 64 meg of RAM, and uh, funny enough, this actually is a layout PCB version that is common in the server versions of the Radian 7500. And if you look on eBay for those cards, they are absolutely ridiculously priced on eBay. They are really, really expensive. Um, and I was trying to find one of those for a bit of playing around in Windows 98 and managed to stumble across this card for an absolute bargain. Um, this is a really awesome card. I've already benchmarked it. This thing performs really, really nicely. In fact, the performance of this card, even though it's on PCI, kind of blew me away a little bit. Um, I was not surprising this to be as fast as it, as it actually was, uh, especially compared to something like the, uh, you know, the full-blown Radian 9500 and 9700 and 9800 cards. This thing holds its own really, really nicely, which I was quite surprised about. Uh, so yeah, that one arrived uh, last month, so in the end of August. Uh, and I guess now this is the the special card. So if you guys uh, have been watching my other collection videos, you may have noticed me at some point mention my old GeForce 4 TI 4600 uh, card that I got that sadly uh, is dead due to, well, basically it's all brown around here. The, the previous owner of the card uh, had a, C, a cooler fail on it and kept running the card with a dead cooler and basically burnt out the card. Uh, and I mentioned in a previous video how if I did happen to stumble across uh, another another version of these cards uh, for a good price that I would actually pick one up uh, because it's probably my all-time favorite card from the GeForce 4 lineup. Um, and while I was looking for a uh, just a standard Ultra Asus you know, version of the TI4600 like this one, I managed to stumble across a rather special card and something that I am really proud that I managed to finally find uh, because this is probably what I would call one of the poster childs for the GeForce 4 era of cards. Um, this card is really special. That is this thing here. This is the deluxe, or sorry, the ultra deluxe version of the V8460 uh, Asus TI4600. This is an incredible card. Um, 
Uh, now, if you've been following me on Instagram, uh, I have actually already teased a few photos and a cool little snippet video of this card. I'm planning to do a very cool, uh, really cool little video for this, uh, and it's kind of inspired me to do a very different type of video when reviewing, uh, you know, video cards and stuff, which I'm going to be trying out. So. Uh, that's coming very soon as well. But yeah, this card in particular, um, I managed to find from a user in the UK. Uh, I have to give a huge thanks and shout out to him, Colin, uh, because, you know, this card was only for sale in the UK, and um, I hinted to him how much I was willing to pay for this, and that I would really appreciate it if he was able to offer international shipping. And as soon as he read that message, he was very happy to provide international shipping. Uh, for this card. Um, this is now officially the card that I have paid the most for out of all of the cards in my collection. Um, and, uh, I must say, I kind of had a bit of a panic mode uh, for this because the listing for this card actually ended at 7am uh, or about around 7am here in Australia uh, in the morning and uh, I had to set my alarm to actually make sure I was up at that time to, to not miss uh, the end of the bid and uh, I slept through my alarm and in a panic woke up and rushed my my previous highest uh, bid had already gone someone else had already outbid me and um, I ended up putting in my final bid that I wanted to bid for the card with I think around four or five seconds remaining on the on the bid uh, so cl absolutely sniped it unintentionally uh, from the other guy that had put in a bid for it and uh, won it with only a couple of seconds remaining so Really, really happy. I was ecstatic. I'm kind of rambling a little bit because, to be honest, I'm still a little bit lost for words that I managed to find one of these cards. Um, uh, back in the day when this card was featured in the Atomic magazine here in Australia, I was like, oh my god, and I fell in love with this video card. Uh, it was one of the very few video cards that just didn't look like crap. Um, it was, uh, I mean, this card basically... It just looked absolutely incredible, you know, compared to all the other reference models of the, the TI-4600 from back in the day. Um, you know, this car just looked absolutely incredible. It looked like an old, uh, like, American, like, I don't know, Roadster, like, hot rod with its cool sort of flared wing-looking, uh, you know, design here on the on the, on the, the heatsink here. It just looks absolutely incredible. And uh, I know I've, I've actually shared this uh, photo of this on the Tech Power Up. Uh, rare and collectible um, video card forum and the nostalgia forum as well and had a really good response from people Well a few people mentioned that it's not their particular favorite version of the TI 4600 But this in my opinion is absolutely uh, It looks absolutely incredible and it is it was the the poster child of the GeForce 4 range of cards from back in the day uh, and I can't believe I managed to get one for my collection. It's now Probably one of the most prized uh, cards that I have in my personal collection. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be one of the biggest updates, uh, collection updates for the rest of 2017. I may do one sometime in December uh, because it's just at the moment myself and my partner are flat out trying to organise and uh, sort out our wedding and stuff for next year. And uh, we've got kind of got some deadlines that we have to adhere to. Uh, and then we're taking some time off over December, Christmas period as well. I'm uh, doing a lot of stuff with family and that. So, um because uh, sadly my grandfather's not doing too well so I'm gonna head down to Tassie and sort of visit him and uh, catch up with the family and bits and pieces so um yeah that's it from me hope you've enjoyed this little collection update for a bits and pieces that I managed to pick up thanks for watching the video guys hope you've enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you in the next one bye for now